Welcome to another episode of American Outdoors, where today we are looking into the dog food industry, specifically dry kibble. Most pet owners try to balance the health, happiness, and fitness of their dogs against budget and convenience. And differentiating between marketing and reality isn't always easy when trying to decipher the ingredients listed on the back of the bag. So get ready as we discuss and break down the ingredients and nutritional value of some of the cheapest and possibly lowest quality dry dog food in the North American market. Our list is based on the research and recommendations of veterinary professionals. It is not all inclusive or in any order and may not reflect all of the products available in your area. Determinations are subjective and depend on various factors, including ingredient quality, nutritional balance, recalls, and potential health risks. However, there are some general red flags to look out for when evaluating lower quality dog foods. Regardless of the manufacturer or ingredients, the process for making dry dog food is the same. Meat by products, cereals, grains, dyes, sweeteners, flavorings, and preservatives are mixed together and run through a machine known as an extruder. Protein content generally ranges from 18 to 30%, and carbohydrates can vary from 30 to 60%. The shelf life for most dry dog food, when properly stored, is from 12 to 16 months. To add some background, dry kibble makes up about 70% of total dog food sales in the United States every year. Last year, the pet food market was valued at approximately $31 billion, with continued growth of over 5% annually. And in North America, 65 million homes have at least one dog. Rather than defining cheap food, for the moment, let's just define manufactured dry dog food. Purina has been a leader in the pet food industry since 1893 and one of the cheapest brands around, but their dog chow has, at best, questionable nutritional value for dogs. Its main ingredient is corn, with a noticeable amount of soybean meal and whole grain thrown in. This may not be enough to meet the standards of nutritional level that any pet food should have. While there is some amount of actual chicken included, most of the meat-based ingredients come in the form of meat and bone meal, as well as poultry byproduct. The long list of nutritional no-nos continues with a slew of artificial colors, flavors, and preservatives none of which benefit your dog and all of which are completely unnecessary. Looking into the primary ingredients of Gravy Train, many are questionable to be a part of your dog's diet. Corn, soy, cornstarch, preservatives, bone meal, and animal fat are some of the ingredients that make this kibble inadequate for meeting your pup's nutritional needs. Gravy Train does add some real meat to their dog food, but the amount is very small compared to the level of meat or poultry byproducts found in the recipe. Also, some of the food colorings added are known to be harmful to dogs. If you're looking for real meat dog food, you can certainly do much better than this one. What makes Pedigree Dry Dog Food a brand to avoid is its inadequate nutritional value. They produce dog food for different life stages and sizes. However, if you look closely at the list of ingredients, you will see that they do not vary in formulation. The primary ingredient in all versions from puppy to adult, small dog, and large, is corn. At high levels, it is hard for a dog to digest. It too is laden with fillers and byproducts and also contains dyes known to be harmful to pets. Its relatively low price makes pedigree a popular choice, not necessarily a healthy one. Following a reoccurring theme for low-nutrition dog food is kibbles and bits. As with the earlier brands, the staple here is corn, soy, wheat flour, and meat byproducts like bone meal. Any nutritional value for low-quality dog food like this is a race through preservatives, harmful food dyes, and a general lack of quality natural ingredients. Food coloring can cause allergic reactions in dogs, just as it does in humans. Food coloring toxicity can manifest as itching, hives, or even more severe symptoms such as vomiting, diarrhea, and seizures. Walmart's own popular brand known as Ol' Roy is touted as a complete nutrition kibble, which it is not. It is sold for a low price because it is made for a low price. 
It contains heavy doses of flavor enhancers and preservatives such as citric acid, which is known to cause dental and digestive issues in dogs. Some of the main ingredients are also corn, soy, wheat, chicken byproducts, and bone meal. It is the equivalent of fast food for pets. The Alpo brand dog food is designed for flavor. It contains numerous delicious ingredients and enhancers that might catch your picky dog's attention. It also has colorful elements to capture the eye. Unfortunately, those tasty ingredients aren't nutritious ingredients. It contains only 18% protein, which is extremely low, and necessitates adding a protein supplement to your dog's diet. It is more of the same with regards to fillers and preservatives. The bag states that Alpo is everything that your dog needs, but it's not. Just under two-thirds of the calorie content from CalCan is carbohydrates, which is a huge amount and likely due to a large amount of grains. They list chicken as an ingredient, which is a good source of meat. However, they also add bone meal and, like other brands, are not transparent about the type used. Typically, bone meal is ground up cartilage and less desirable pieces. Not knowing the specifics of the recipe allows the manufacturers to make significant alterations to the product without the buyer's knowledge. The proportion of protein and fat is also towards the low side. The primary meat in IAM's proactive adult mini chunk is chicken, which is a good thing. Unfortunately, they have loaded their product with cornmeal as a filler, both for reasons of cost and convenience as well as whole grain corn, sorghum, and chicken byproducts, which may include things like bones, beaks, skin, and internal organs. Corn isn't digestible for dogs as a whole grain, so it needs to be refined and then cooked. However, processing corn leads to a higher glycemic index, a concern with any grain-based diet because it can raise the blood sugar level in animals. A repeating theme among the makers of low-end, brand name dry dog food, is the tendency to emphasize marketing while substituting synthetics, dyes, and unknown, lesser quality ingredients. It is a cost-saving method using fillers that focus on quantity over quality. While we chose not to cover better alternatives to low-end kibble during this episode, it isn't hard to locate good, nutritious ingredients at a similar cost, or simply make your own. You may be surprised at the transformation in energy, stamina, even mood that a healthy diet can give your dog. The most important thing you can do when buying dry kibble for your pet is to check the ingredients listed on the back of the bag rather than rely on the claims made on the front. Educating yourself about their dietary needs will make for a happier pup. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of American Outdoors. Please leave your comments below and be sure and share, like, and subscribe you can also find us on Facebook, X, Pinterest, and Instagram. Thanks for watching, folks, and we'll see you again soon.